Assalamu alaikum. This is Megan Wyatt answering your question here at About Islam. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very sorry to hear that your brother passed away. Um, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite you know, him and you together in Jannah and everyone that he loved and everyone that loves him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the patience to work through the grief that is now a friend and a companion. You know, grief comes into our lives and then it just kind of stays around and I know that it can be tough at times, so I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you working with that grief and the loss of your brother. Now on top of all of this, you've had a husband who drinks, who does drugs, who's a womanizer, who's cheated on you, who has physically, emotionally, and psychologically abused you. So pretty much he ticks all of the boxes of a terrible person, unfortunately. And I really ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn that man around and to guide him to the straight path because the path he is on is one of absolute destruction where he will ruin lives and hurt people as long as he stays on this path. And unfortunately, you have been one of those individuals. And you're blaming yourself to the extent that you've said that you've wanted to kill yourself. I want to be really clear and tell you that no human being who is that destructive, that messed up, has that many issues, is worth for you to think that your life isn't worth living. You are a wonderful human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and he created you with care and he created you with mercy and he created you with a purpose. Allah knows your name and he answers you when you make dua and he listens to you and you are one who testifies to la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah which means you're part of the best ummah, the best group of people on the face of the earth. You definitely matter. And what I'm hearing in that is a couple of things. One is that you're blaming yourself. You said, how can I be so stupid, you know, that you stayed with him? You're asking yourself, you know, why did you endure so much for so long? Why, why would you allow yourself to go through that? And here's the thing. When you're in a situation where, you know, you mentioned this is an arranged marriage and you're a new bride and you're a new wife and you, you go into this marriage with your heart on your sleeve, right? You, you know, your heart's wide open. You want to be a great wife and you're focused on doing your best. And so maybe you went into that situation thinking you've got to prove yourself. You've got to prove your worth. You've got to be chosen, right? And what happens, and, and that's natural, by the way, I think like everybody has that. But what happens when you get with a person who's toxic, who's dangerous, who's abusive, then they play on that desire to be approved of. They play on that desire for, for you to be chosen. They get inside your head and they start to cause doubt that you're worthy of being loved, that you're good enough, that anybody would ever want you. They, they talk about how great they are and how terrible you are. They say things like you're lucky that you know they married you. Who else would want you? And who else is going to want you after them? You know, abusive individuals and toxic individuals, their job, unfortunately, is to destroy everything you know about reality and about yourself. And so you're left in this situation where you're thinking you're not worth anything, but that's not true. That is just all of their lies, all of their insecurities, all of their emptiness. You know, ultimately a person who is abusive and doing drugs and is an addict and all of these things, that's a person who has no purpose in life. They are completely empty. And in reality, even though it doesn't seem like it, their self-worth is like this. They put on a show with their abusive talk, with their violent behavior, with the drugs, with the alcohol, with the womanizing, all this stuff, right? All of that is just to cover up the feelings they really have about themselves. And so they try to make other people feel really bad. So you know, like with kids, when we teach kids in school that if somebody's bullying another kid, you know, the idea is the bully is probably being hurt too. So we have to help not just the bullied kid, but we've got to also figure out why the bullying one is hurting and what's driving their behavior. Because it's understanding that hurt people hurt people, right? He's a hurt person. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with, with anything about you. You've just been the victim of his actions. You've been the victim of his insecurities. You've been the victim of his emptiness. You are the victim of his loss of purpose in life. You're a victim in this situation. And I really want you to go and get counseling or talk to someone, you know, whoever it is, a therapist, a counselor, a coach. I want you to take some space right now because you deserve it to work through all this messy tornado feelings and thoughts that are going on in your head because you deserve to live a beautiful life. 
You deserve to be loved. And anything that he said about how you look or how you behave and all that stuff, I want you to, you know, you're, we're going to work through basically getting rid of all of that. Because of course you can be loved again. And of course you can be treated with respect again. But the first person that has to treat you with respect and the first person that has to see your beauty is going to be you. You are that first step. You're that first step towards love. You're that first step towards protection. You're that first step towards, towards compassion. You're that first step towards mercy. And so it's rebuilding you back up from being blindsided completely by a set of behaviors that you didn't even know could exist in a person, that you never maybe even had experience with something like this before. And if you haven't done it yet, please Google, you know, the cycle of domestic violence. Please buy some books, listen to some podcasts, you know, do whatever you need to do to research exactly what you've been through. And here's why. I'm a huge believer in finding validation. And what you've been through, unfortunately, thousands and thousands, if not millions of women go through every single year. There are lots of women that understand exactly how you feel right now, exactly what you're going through right now, exactly the thoughts that are going through your head. There's so many women that have been in this place and you will find your voice in theirs, but they're a little bit farther on this journey and they can also tell you how to pick yourself back up and how to work through the pain, the devastation, the grief, the confusion, the loss, the lies. They can help you get a little bit further down this path to where you start healing. So no, your life isn't worth throwing away because somebody else is a jerk. Just putting it out there, right? It's don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up for enduring it, for trying. This is what happens in a victim cycle. And that's why it's called being a victim. It is extremely difficult, if not impossible for some women when they've been in this situation for years to break through. So the fact that you have clarity right now, the fact that you're asking that question, why did I endure this? Why did I stay? You're able to now start answering that question. Well, what was it that allowed you to say, I'm gonna go through this again? And you might not like the answers right now. They might be a little uncomfortable. They might be kind of messy, but you know what? It's really beautiful when someone pushes through that messy stuff, that uncomfortable stuff, because on the other side is a truth that is gonna set you free for the rest of your life. And you're gonna go through this and it's gonna be something that teaches you something for the rest of your life. So it's an opportunity to grow. And yeah, I, I get it, it's painful, it's ugly, it's yucky, it's messy, darn it, you really wish you could make the pain stop. I get it, but hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dig deep and ask these questions, but not from a place of shame, from a place of curiosity, from just a place of like, yeah, why, why didn't I the first time you hit me just call the police and be done? Hmm, what was that about? And when you start to answer those questions, you get stronger and you get more empowered and you become just, you know, mashallah, like you're going to, you're going to elevate yourself as a human being. And I say that because I have confidently seen that with so many other people that I have worked with. So I am definitely sorry that you've had to go through this, but you are not an impure person. You're not a used up person. You're not a worthless person. You're a victim and it's time for you to use your voice, say exactly what happened to you, call it what it is, that you've been abused and manipulated and all of the things that you've dealt with, lied to, like you name it. And it is time for you to take a stand for your life and for your own self-worth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us to take care of ourselves as Muslims. And if you start to feel that feeling again of feeling like you want to die, that you want to be done, I want you to tell yourself, hang in there. This hurts, but you're going to push through it. But if you still feel like you're at risk for hurting yourself, please reach out to somebody that you love and someone that you know loves you. I know that there are people that love you. I know there are people that care about you. And there are always suicide prevention hotlines. Pick up the phone and call someone. It's anonymous, but talk to people who understand what you're going through. You don't have to do this alone. Okay? All right. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.